In this video, I will show you how to create a component library using Storybook, React, and Tailwind. If you're beating your head against the keyboard trying to get set up, or are you taking your first baby steps into the component world? Not to worry. I'll walk you through each step, and by the end of this video, you'll have a component library that is ready for you to making epic components. Or, it doesn't have to be epic. I plan to make bad ones. But more on that later. With that, let's dive in. Now to get started, I created an empty folder and to get started, you just run MPX storybook at latest init and you get to choose which type of installation you want. And we're going to choose react beat TS. That's going to go and install everything and then boot it up right away. And this is what you get when you first install it. You can go through the tour if you like, but you can see all the different components that they give you right from the start. And down here, you can make changes to your component. These are the props that are passed into the component. Now that we have Storybook installed, we're just going to go through the files and clean them up a bit. They put a lot of boilerplate code in there that we don't necessarily need. So we're going to clean that out and start from fresh. So these are the files that they give us right from the start. Now they actually create an, an application, which we won't need. And have the stories as a separate thing. So this is kind of like having a, a single page app and then having stories to create the components for that single page app. We're just creating a component library so we don't need all this stuff for the application. So we can select all this stuff and delete it. We're going to create a new folder called components. And we can get rid of the old boilerplate and assets. And we also don't need the public anymore. That's for the application. And we don't need the index.html. That's for the application as well. And inside of our components, how I usually like to do it is create a, a folder for each component. So if we have a card component, I create a card folder. And then inside of there, there would be three files. There would be an index.ts. There would be a card uh, tsx and then there would be your stories file so inside of our index.ts we're just going to export the actual card from the card.tsx this is just to make importing a lot nicer when you're writing an import statement for the card component inside our card.tsx we actually have our card component itself i'll get into it more in the future and inside of our card stories.tsx, this is our story file for Storybook. Just to make sure it's working, we type in npn run Storybook, and here's our card. Along with our title and description, which are the props, which you can modify. Just going over what's inside of our stories file, we're importing our card, we're giving it a title, and the title is what shows up on the left hand side here. You'll see example card, example card. The component is the component that it's for. We have our tags. The arg types are for this bottom section down here. So we're saying the title control is type text. So it's going to give us a text box. If it was a number, we could use a number down here or whatever. So we're just saying we want to update the props with the controller using a text box. And down below we have our story. And whatever you name this is what's going to show up on the left hand side there. And the args are what is being passed into the component as props. So we have a title and a description. And if we look at our card itself, it has a props of a title and a description. Right now, if we try to build or push to NPM, it, it won't work. The build is making an application. We need to make it so that it's building a library instead. So we're going to get into updating the vconfig to do just that. Starting out, this is what our vconfig looks like. And the first thing we want to do is create a DTS file for our build so that if someone's using TypeScript, they get the TypeScript experience when they're using our component library. And there's a plugin called Feet Plugin DTS, and we're just going to install that. Once it's installed, we can add the DTS function 
And we're excluding the stories and the tests because we actually don't want the types being created for our stories or our tests. We just want our main component files after that. So this is a magic sauce that makes it a component library. The build lib is just specifying the entry, which is our index.ts, which we haven't created yet. So let's do that. Index.ts. And inside of here, we export any components that we create. So this is what our end user is going to be interacting with. If the component isn't in this file, then they don't get to use it. Then we name our component, and then we specify the file name and the different formats that we want. So our file name is going to be UI dot, and then whatever the format is, like ES for ES modules, CJS for common JS, and UMD is a universal. ES modules is generally the newer way of doing things. Common JS is more for Node.js, and the universal one actually works in both browser and Node.js. After that, we're going to create some peer dependencies. And this is just so that we're not including React and React DOM into our component library itself. We want the user to already have that installed in their project. So we're going to go into our package JSON and change our dependencies to peer dependencies. And then we're going to import those. And in our rollup options, we're just going to say those are external. We're not going to include them in our build. And in terms of the code, we're saying that the globals are React, React DOM, so that we have access to them within our files themselves. And that's all we really need to build it as a library. So if we run npm run build, it'll create a disk folder. And inside of there, we have our DTS files, which just describe the types. And then we have our main actual files for the code. As it stands, it won't work if we try to push this up to an NPM registry. Anyone that tried to use our NPM module, it just won't work for them. We need to update our package.json with a couple of things first. Let's start off by specifying where our types are. So it's just the types property, and then we specify the disk folder and where the DTS file is. Then we have our exports, which is just defining where our built JavaScript is. Now we have our import, which is meant for ES modules, and we point to our ES file, and then require, which is for our node modules. We could use CJS here, but in terms of using React components on the server side, UMDs tends to be a little easier. Lastly, we just have to specify where our build folder is, where all of our files are. We have a fully functioning library at this point. We can quit and call it a day, or we can be like the cool kids install Tailwind. In case you weren't sure, we want to be like the cool kids. So we're going to install Tailwind next. Installing Tailwind is pretty straightforward. There's a couple ways to do it, but we're going to use the Tailwind CLI and you just copy, paste, and let that run. This is going to generate a tailwind.config and we just wanted to find where they can find our files. Actually, we don't need the JS because we're using TypeScript, but you can have JS in here if you wanted it. At this point, Tailwind is installed. Now, if you look at the card component, you'll see that I'm prefixing all the classes with this UI dash. That's because we're creating a component library. If we were to import this into a Tailwind project, we might be overriding what these classes mean. For example, our rounded large might be different from what the project's rounded large is. So we just want to prefix it with this UI just to ensure that it's not overriding anything. And we can do this in the Tailwind config by just adding prefix and just specifying what that prefix is. Also, another problem is specificity. And you'll see that I wrapped our component in this div with the UI. This is just so that we can deal with specificity issues that come up. I'll get to that in a bit. In our Tailwind config, we just want to add this important and .ui. That'll make it so when we build our CSS, all the classes are gonna be prefixed with this .ui. Now if we go into Storybook, you'll notice that the styles haven't been updated yet. And there's still a couple more steps we need to do. We need to create our main CSS file that imports all the Tailwind. And then we also need to update our package JSON. And we'll get into those next. In the source, I'm going to create a file and call it Tailwind Entry. And in here, we just need to import the Tailwind stuff. Looking at our package.json, there are three areas that we just need to update. There's the build, which is building our actual component library. There's the storybook, which is our development environment and build storybook, which builds storybook so that it can be hosted somewhere. So first we'll look at the build. First thing we're going to do is create a build CSS 
And this is running the Tailwind CSS command line. And we're minifying, we're specifying the input, which is our Tailwind entry CSS file that we created. And then an output, which is our styles.css. Now we want to run this inside of our build command. So we just do double ampersand and then npm run build CSS. We're going to do somewhat the same thing for storybook. We're going to create a storybook CSS. We're going to call the tailwind CSS command line. And then W is for watch. So we're watching when files change. Our input is the same and our output is index.css. And one thing to note, we're putting this in the source because we're going to have to reference it in our storybook configuration. We then have to call it inside of our storybook. We're using something called concurrently, which is an NPM module that just allows you to run several commands at the same time. So let's install that. Just npm install dash d concurrently. And there we go. And we're just running the storybook CSS and the actual storybook dev. Lastly, we're going to create a command for the build storybook, which is again is running tailwind CSS dash m and same thing, input output. And once again, we're using concurrently to run our CSS and then storybook build. And lastly, we're going to add a pre-publish only. This is just so that when we're publishing to NPM, it's going to run this NPM run build before it pushes, just to ensure we have the latest files built. And then we have one last step. Inside of Storybook, we're outputting this index.css. We just have to make sure that the Storybook configuration makes reference to this. Inside of our Storybook folder, we have this preview.ts, and we just have to import that CSS file. When we reload Storybook, all of our styles are in place for our card now. And the last thing we need to do is make sure it works in an actual application. So we'll get into that next. Actually, one last thing before we test it out. Because we built the new styles.css using our new build script, we just have to add that to our exports so that we can access it inside of an external application. Okay, now on to testing. To test things out, I created an XJS app, nothing special, just using the defaults that they gave us. And what I did was I imported our card from UI, which is the name in our package.json, and our styles. And then I just use the component like any other component, passed in a title and description. And right now this is not going to work. We have to do one step before it'll start working. So the last thing we need to do is we link our component library up to our Next.js app. And you can do this by running npm link. It's a two-step process. So you run npm link inside of the component library. And then inside of our app, we run npm link and then the name of the component library. And now we're good to test out our app. And if we look at our card, you'll see that it looks different from our actual component that we have in Storybook. And this gray box with the rounded edges, that's just because we didn't actually specify what the background color is or what the rounded corners look like for our paragraph. So if we inspect the description in our component, You'll see that the styling is being applied from the actual page itself and not from our Tailwind. So we'll look at addressing that next. So one way to handle this problem is just going into the component itself and then overriding everything that is a problem. So for our case, our background needed to be white and we had a border radius and a border on it. So we would just go into our component and get rid of all those. Another way of doing it is using CSS layers. CSS layers are a lot like Photoshop layers in that they stack on top of one another and can choose which one comes first and that affects the output. This allows us to revert any CSS changes that have been applied to any of the children inside of the UI class. And if we look at our component, we have our UI class, so that means anything that's being applied to those from the outside, we can revert it back and then apply our Tailwind CSS on top of that. Now the downside to this approach is that you're going to have to modify the application that's using your component, which you can't always do. If you're making a component for everyone to use on the internet, this probably isn't the best way of doing it. But if you own the application and you own the component library, then it, it might be a good option for you. The CSS layers is a nice way to divide up your code and determine which CSS runs first. Inside of our app, we have a global CSS, which is what it sounds like, all the global CSS. We're right wrapping that in a base layer. And then we have our page CSS, 
and I wrap that in a, a page layer. And then at the top here, I'm just specifying the order that things load in. So the base page and then UI. And with that, when we refresh, it's loading properly now. There's one bonus thing that we're going to cover that every component library needs, and that's to change the logo. We're going to update the storybook theme and inject our own logo. It's super simple and makes your project that much more polished. So inside your storybook folder, you're going to need to create two files, a manager.ts and your theme. The theme one can be named whatever you want. Looking at the theme, you just import storybook theme create and have that create function. And then you pass in the information that you need. The one that we're going to look at is the brand image. Upload your image to a server and then put the URL here. There's a bunch of stuff you can do with this theme. You can change the colors and all that. I'll leave a link in the description below to the documentation on this. And then in our manager file, you just make reference to the theme that we created and we set the config on the add-ons to have our theme. And once we run Storybook again, we now have our own logo. Now you're all set up for your component library and all you have to do is create your components. Personally, I'm going to be using this setup to create a design system devoted to bad UI. You might've seen things like this where you have to use a fan to get the letters. This kind of idea, this isn't mine. This is uh, something from Reddit. Uh, but yeah, that kind of idea where it's incredibly difficult for you to do anything. So I'm going to devote an entire library to doing that. Consider subscribing if you want to see the first component being built. I'll be leaving a link down in the description to the project as it is right now. So be sure to check it out. Feel free to play around with it. Maybe if you don't want to use Tailwind, maybe something like StyleX. We have a video on StyleX if you want to find out more about it. And thanks for watching. See you next time.